Hi everyone, um, hope you've had a good week. Hope you've been able to keep yourself busy. And I also hope that you've uh, really enjoyed being in the garden if you've, had, if you've got a garden to play in and the beautiful sunshine. Sunshine reminds me a lot of holidays and this time of year some people do go on their holiday. Um, I especially like going to the beach and I love the sea, the sound of the ocean and um, I love to hear the waves crashing on the beach and also them crashing on the, um, the rocks too. Oceans are beautiful, they're amazing and they're mysterious places. So they can be really quiet, oceans can, and they can be really noisy. I love the smell of the sea and I love the smell of seaweed as well. I know that's a bit weird, but I do. I love the, it when the sea is really calm. God knows what, because um, he made the ocean, he made the sea. So God knows everything there is to know about the world and the ocean and the earth as well. And the ocean covers 70% of the world as we know it anyway. And the average depth of the sea is about 12,100 feet, which is about two miles deep. So that's quite, quite, quite deep. We only, when we go swimming, we don't obviously swim that deep, do we? But if an amazing fact is that in the Pacific Ocean, <laughs> there's a place called the Challenger Deep and that's 36,070 feet deep. Mount Everest, which is the biggest uh, mountain in the world, can fit into that and still have over a mile of water on top of it. So that is amazingly deep. So today the story is going to be about the ocean, partly, and how amazing our God is in keeping his people safe. And the person who's going to be telling you the story today is called Bill. He's one of our teachers at Kids City. So I'll hand you over to him, listen to what he has to say, and I'll speak to you a bit later. Bye. Hello. This story can be found in the book of Exodus. To find the book of Exodus, you simply go to the very first book in the Bible, which is... Shout louder than that. I can't hear you. I'm on your telly. Genesis. So go to Genesis, turn right, and then you're in Exodus. Have you ever had to look after your little brother or sister? Or even after your little brother and sister and their friend? Or even five of their friends and had to make them dinner? That's a big responsibility. Well, Moses had to look after two and a half million people when he brought the Hebrews out of Egypt. I bet he's glad he didn't have to make them dinner as well. I suppose you could call this story from Pharaoh to zero in one simple move. When the Hebrews left Egypt, they were given lots of valuable things like gold, silver, diamonds, cars, helicopters, but not cars and helicopters. But they were given valuable things like donkeys and cattle and sheep and chickens and dinosaurs, but not dinosaurs, because that would be very silly. Moses knew he had to lead the Hebrews from Egypt to the promised land. But where is the promised land? There's no maps that say promised land and signposts on the way say this way to the promised land. But God promised to help Moses. He said, I will lead you in the day by a pillar of cloud and at night by a pillar of fire. And the only help he had was dinosaur and spider monkey. I would do 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 do. I know that I should do 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 do. I would do 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 do. I know that I should do 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 do. I don't eat meat. I've got big feet. I eat wood, do, 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 do. But no, not, not, but not spider monkey and dinosaur because they're not in this um, story. And that was very silly. Now, after, the, after they left Egypt, God told Moses to dedicate the firstborn boy, girl, and even the firstborn of the animals to him. Because the last thing that happened in Egypt was 
the death of the firstborn. So God was saying, you dedicate them to me, they are mine, and I look after them, they're safe. Now, it was at this time when Pharaoh, ah, don't scare the children, became very, very angry. And he got his big army together and lots and lots of reinforcements and set out to get the children, the Hebrew, the Hebrews back. <laughs> he got it wrong in, in rehearsal as well. He only had one job. In the meantime, in the desert, the Lord told Moses to camp by a place called Pi Hirith. Now Pi Hirith was, if you've got Egypt there, can you see? No, sorry, he's not there anymore because he's moved to be back with his mum and dad and, and she's got married. She lives down here now and, and, and he's moved to another country. So you've got Egypt there with all the people in it like that. Can you see that? See that? And you've got the Red Sea there and Pi Hirith is just there by the Red Sea, which explains why the name Pi Hirith means mouth of water. You see, God had a plan. And God had a man. God knew that that naughty Pharaoh would think that Moses was stuck between his ginormous angry army and the Red Sea with nowhere to go. So he thought he could just go and get him and bring them all back. But God was going to show Pharaoh who had all the power. And it wasn't Pharaoh. When God's people discovered the Pharaoh was coming after him with a very big, angry army. They became very, very frightened. But remember, God had a plan. Now Moses was trapped between the Red Sea and Pharaoh's army. With Pharaoh's army getting closer and closer, God told Moses to lift up his staff. And because Moses was God's servant, it did as God said. And as Moses lifted up the staff, God sent a mighty wind and the sea started to roar and the waves started to bubble. Then all of a sudden, the water started to separate. And just as Pharaoh's army was getting closer and closing in, Moses and the people of God saw a way through the water. So with the very angry Pharaoh and his army racing towards them, Moses and all the people of uh, of the Hebrews and their animals hurried safely to the other side. Pharaoh was getting closer and closer and by the time he was halfway across, Moses and God's people arrived safely to the other side. Just as quickly as he parted, the water came back together. And then Pharaoh shouted, <laughs> as Pharaoh and his very wet army became fish food. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a
that wasn't the first miracle that God did for his children, and it certainly wasn't the last. When they were hungry, God gave them food from heaven. And when they were thirsty, he gave them water from a dry rock. Those are amazing stories, but stories for another day. Another miracle was that for 40 years, the Hebrews walked around the desert and their clothes and shoes never wore out. In fact, as they grew, their clothes and shoes grew with them. At that time, the snakes that lived in the desert started to bite the people. So God told Moses to make a statue of a snake out of bronze and hold it up on a high pole. Then anyone that had been bitten, all they had to do was look at the bronze um, serpent on the pole and they would be healed. Can you think of someone else that was lifted up? Someone that took all our sicknesses and diseases. And if we look to him as Lord and Saviour, we will be healed and saved too. Yes, I'm talking about Jesus. Trust him. He'll always lead you to the truth because he is the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. He said, behold, I stand at the door of your heart and I knock. Anyone that opens the door up to me, I'll come in and I'll live with them. I'd like to say a prayer. So if you all stop what you're doing, close your eyes. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can come to you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I bring these children, I bring everyone watching to you. Lord, I thank you that you love us so much that you gave your only son. That if we believe in you, we will never, never die, but have everlasting life. And Father, we thank you for your protection and your provision. We love you, Lord. I declare that, that the week ahead will be prosperous and healthy and fun for everyone listening and all your children everywhere. In Jesus' name, amen. One more thing. All the actors take a bow. Bye. My God is strong, he'll do anything big or small, nothing is impossible.
welcome back. Hope you enjoyed the story. I hope you enjoyed the songs. Just before you go, I'd like to tell you about something that's super duper exciting. Um, your parents will have received an email this week about um, us having some Zoom meetings. That doesn't mean to say that you're going to go super fast. It means that um, these meetings are on the internet and they're for Kids City Kids and um, meeting at 10 o'clock on a Sunday just for 15 minutes so that you can say hi to your friends. We'll have a couple of the Kids City teachers there too. So ask your parents about um, the email with the links um, and I'll, so hopefully I'll see you on Sunday at 10 o'clock. Also, any activities that you've done in the last few weeks from the sheets that I've been sending in and putting on the website, if you could let me have those, I'll be so excited to see what you've been up to and what you've done and how creative you've been. So um, send them in to me so I can have a look and hopefully I will see you really soon. So bye for now.